Okay, so our warm up today, you had to um, solve the equation algebraically and then use the graph to describe the behavior of the related function uh, near any repeated zeros, and then what do you notice? So solving, okay, solving for our x's ties in our factoring stuff that we did yesterday. Um, we also talked about how when you um, aren't sure of an x-intercept, you can use one that you see on your graph to prove that it is by synthetic division, and then factoring what you have left over. Part A, you could factor by a GCF and then basic factoring. B and C, you had to use one of the x-intercepts from your graph, solve it, and move forward. Okay. So looking at what we have here, what do you notice about the solutions, the graph, and the function? Do we see any patterns happening? So, we're, yeah, we're looking at our solutions compared to our graph, compared to our equation. What do we notice? They all have how many answers? Let's start there. They all have three answers, right? All of my functions are a degree of what? Three. Okay, so that makes sense. Part A, how many x-intercepts do you have? We have three separate x-intercepts, and I have three separate x-values, right? Zero, negative, two, one. Do those match up? Yes. Here's my negative two. There's my zero. There's my one. Okay. How about this graph in the middle, though? How many times did it cross the x-axis? It only crossed twice. So how do I have three answers? Look at my look at my uh, values. I have negative two one one. See how I got x equals one twice. See how your behavior changed at when we got to x equals one. It didn't cut through anymore. What did it do? It like, bounced off of it, right? That's called a repeated solution. That's something. That's what we're going to look at today. Okay. See where that comes from. Our last one. How many times does this cross the x-axis? Just once. But my degree is three. I should have three solutions. Do we have three solutions? Yeah, they're just all negative one. So it does cross the x-axis once, but see how it's not a cut through? It's more of like a turn in, turn out. Okay, so the behavior changes based off of your repeated solutions. Okay, I don't know if you heard me say the word, um, uh, uh, Multiplicity? Have I, have I mentioned that? No? Okay. It's also called multiplicity. So if you use other, other resources, it can be called a repeated solution or a multiplicity. Okay. So how many times we get a solution will change how it behaves when it touches the x-axis. This is what we're going to explore more today. Okay. This is the introduction of what we're going to do. Do you have a question? So that's this is this is previous knowledge, right? I picked one of the x-intercepts to test. Can you do it without a graph? How would you factor that top one without a graph? It's a cubic, so you can't use any of our, you can't do quadratic formula, it's a cubic function, right? So this one, you need the graph. Yep. Okay, so let's explore more. Finding solutions and zeros, okay? We have used the zero product property and factoring to solve quadratic equations. You can extend this technique to solve some higher degree polynomial equations. So we're tying in what we just did, but now we're going to take it one step further and solve for x. Okay. So our first example, if I had given this to you yesterday and said factor completely, what would you look for first? Greatest common factor. Do I have one? 
Yes, what is it? 2x. That leaves me with x squared minus 6x plus 9. The difference today is now we're equal to 0, showing we're going to have to actually find what my x value is. Okay. Am I done factoring? No. x squared minus 6x plus 9. Multiplies to give you 9, adds to give you negative 6, negative 3, negative 3. So to write it in complete factored form would be x minus 3 squared, like that. When we solve for x, we take each factor and make it equal to 0. So if I have 2x equals 0, then what's my x value? 0. You divide 0 by 2, we get just a 0. In my parentheses, I'm going to get x equals positive 3, but we're going to get it twice. Okay. So the uh, solution of x equals 3 has a multiplicity of 2. If you look at the equation, see how it had a power of 2 attached to it? That shows you the multiplicity of it as well. So it's going to behave differently at that x intercept because a power of 3 means I have three solutions. The solutions are 0 and then 3, 3, or 0 and then 3 with a multiplicity of 2. All right, example B, if I gave this to you and said solve, what would you, or to factor completely, what would you have to do first? Move my 8 over, there we go, good. So it gives me x cubed minus 2x squared plus 4x minus 8 equals 0. All right, and what method did we use with four pieces? Cut in half, called grouping. Yep, grouping, yep. So what can we divide out, divide out of the first two terms? X squared, what are we left with? X minus 2. What can I take out of my next piece? A positive 4. We're left with X minus 2. That has to happen, right? So what's my first factor going to be? Yeah, those pieces come together. X squared plus 4. And my other factor, x minus 2. That x squared plus 4 is special. That is a sum of squares. We saw that yesterday. So we split it up using conjugates, but what has to get put on the end? The i's. So this is x plus 2i, this is x minus 2i, and then we have x minus 2. So. so this was our sum of squares that we talked about in quiz over yesterday. So what are my values for x? Minus 2i, positive 2i and 2. My degree was a cubic. Do I have three answers? Yes. Two of them are imaginary, but that's okay. Um, so how many times does this touch the x-axis? It's only going to touch the x-axis once. So it's going to cut through, and then it'll turn somewhere like above. But it's only going to actually touch at the real number of 2. The imaginary solutions means it's doing its turn somewhere else. All right, ready for part C? If I gave this to you yesterday and said factor completely, what would you do? 
All right. Nope, you would do equal zero. Okay, what do you think? Negative x squared? Mm -hmm. So we're left with a positive x squared, and then a negative 5x, and then a positive 6. Basic factoring, but multiplies to give you 6, but adds to give you negative 5. Do you all agree? So we have negative x squared, x minus 2, x minus 3. All right, so what are my solutions? So 0, 2, and 3. How many solutions was I supposed to have, though? I was supposed to have 4. So what am I missing? Hmm? Something with the zero. See how I had an exponent of two? Nope. Zero shows up twice. Mm -hmm. So we have zero. 2 and 3, 0 has a multiplicity of 2. So 0, 0, 2, 3, there's my four solutions. Okay, the multiplicity changes what's happening at that point. Okay, these, so like an example 1a, the factor x minus 3 appears more than once. Okay. This creates something called a repeated solution. Write that again. This is a repeated, there we go, solution of x equals 3. So the graph of this is going to touch the x-axis but does not cross the x-axis at the repeated zero of x equals three. And then it's gonna cross through at x equals zero, okay? This concept can be generalized for a polynomial function of f as follows. So when, we are, when our factor is raised to an odd power, the graph will cross through at that x-intercept, okay? So this is when it has a multiplicity Multiplicity of 1, we're going to call it a cut. And a multiplicity of 3, I call it a wiggle. That's just a Daglas thing. So if my degree is just 1, it'll cut straight through it. So um, our very first warm-up was zero, negative two, and one, and then the graph given shows that it cut through three times. It cut through at three different places. Okay. And then our part C in our warm-up, we had negative one repeat itself three times. Okay. So notice in that graph, you had a little wiggle happening. It turned in and it turned out. Okay. So it does still cut through the x-axis, but you have some turns happening. We won't go beyond three when it comes to graphing. Okay. When our factor has an even power, it's going to touch the x-axis but not cross it. Okay. So this is when we have a multiplicity of two, four, six. We will mostly deal with multiplicity of two, and I call it the bounce. Okay, so if we go um, from example one, part A, the one we just did, what this talked about, where three was the repeated solution, and then it cut through zero, so what this graph would, would look like. So we're going to cut through zero, and we're going to bounce off three. 
So it would cut through and then bounce off like that. Okay. Why does this have to happen? Well, a degree of three is an odd number, right? So my n should go in the opposite direction. Remember doing that? Section four, one. Okay. My degree is an odd number. We should have opposite ends. So if I didn't bounce off, I would have gone straight down and now it's a quadratic. It wouldn't match the function. Okay. We know degree of three should turn and go the opposite way. Okay. So this is from example 1a from above. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to put last uh, section 4-4 four, four, with the factoring. And then today, solving and graphing, we're going to put it together into one problem. Okay, so we're going to find the zeros of f of x equals negative 2x to the fourth plus 16x squared minus 32, and then we're going to sketch a graph of the function. Okay, what is my degree? Degree is 4, so that's an even number. My n should go the same way, right? Should they both go up or both go down? They should both go down. And a degree of 4 means we have how many turns in between? There should be three different turns. Okay? So I'm going to predict it should look something like this when we, when we go to solve it. Okay? Um, so make our equation equal to 0 because we're solving. So negative 2x to the 4th plus 16x squared minus 32 equals 0. All right, what do you want to do first? All right, take out negative 2. We're left with x to the power of 4 minus 8x squared plus 16. I'm going to zoom in over here. Yep, so multiplies to give you 16, but adds to give you negative 8. It will be negative 4, negative 4. And what goes in front of both of those factors? X squared. Good, because we had to split apart that x to the power of 4. Is it completely factored? No, because now what can I do? These are both difference of squares. It's the same difference of squares, but they are difference of squares, right? So negative 2 is still out here. This becomes x plus 2, x minus 2. This also becomes x plus 2, x minus 2. So what are my uh, x values? We're going to have x equals, yeah, we have negative 2, but we have it twice when we pull those out, right? And we have x equals positive 2. We also have that happening twice. So how many solutions do we technically have? Four. Was my degree a four? Yes. Make sure that always matches, because if it doesn't, you need to go back and look. Okay? So if I'm only crossing over at negative 2 and positive 2, what's happening at these two spots? It's bouncing off. So we are going to have that upside down W. Um, ooh, bonus question. What's my Y intercept going to be? Mm, look at your original. Negative 32. We can just put that down here. Negative 32. So we're going to bounce, cut through, bounce like this. Looks like that. Um, you could type this into Desmos, our graphing calculator, and make sure that it matches. And it will definitely show you that it's bouncing off of negative 2 and positive 2. Okay, so you can always use that as a resource to show. I do need to see by hand that you can solve for your x-intercepts. Okay. Ready? Are you ready to try one, or do you still need me? Because I have this as a, as a you try. OK, 
Can you try it? Yes? Let's see. Try it, see how far you get. All right, check your work with mine. What's up? Mm -hmm. Now, how did I know to not go this way? Because I could have done that way. It still crosses through the same spots. How did I know I had to do it the other way instead? What's not negative? Yeah, my leading coefficient is positive, right? So because this is positive, I know we had to end in the positive direction. So I knew how to draw it, how to sketch it. Each piece technically has a degree of one, right? And the one is your cut. It's only appearing to once. So we're cutting through negative three, we're cutting through zero, and then we're cutting again through positive two. We're not there yet, though. We got one more little thing, and then we get to do the fun word problem. But look at all the, look at what's coming, though. Isn't that nice? Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> A little bit sometimes, yep. All right. Now, use the graph of the polynomial function f to describe the possible values of a, b, c, and d. All right, so they have given me a graph, a, b, c, and d. It's clearer on your paper, I feel like, than on my screen. So, what do we know about the value of a? It has to be, mm, it has to be, I heard it, it has to be a negative number. How do I know that it has to be a, a negative number? Because we're going in the negative direction, right? So this, so A has to be negative. A has to be less than zero, it has to. I don't understand what that means. A can't be X, but then... Well, we're, we're describing the number. So, yeah, it's not going to be X if it has to be a negative value. Yeah. All right, how about B? Hmm. So, here's B in my function. Do you think it's doing this one? Do you think it's talking about intercept A or intercept B? Is looking at intercept A, how do I know that? It's in the negatives. So B has to be a positive number. There you go. Because when I take it out of my parentheses, it's going to flip its sign, right? So to say plus B, B itself has to be a positive number. So when I pull it out, it changes into a negative number. All right, how about this little C? It has a, what is it? An even number, good. How do I know that? It's bouncing. It has to be even because we're bouncing off of that x-intercept. And then our D has to be what? Our D has to be negative. Because when I pull it out, it's if I um, pull it out, it has to turn it into a positive. So D has to be a negative value. Okay, so none of them can equal zero. Um, so what's a possible equation that this could be? Let's see. Let's make one up. Let's see. Y equals. Give me. Give me a a negative a value. Sounds great. Negative one. What could go in that first set of parentheses? What? Eight? X plus eight? Sure. Is that an even number? Mm -hmm. That would work. What exponent can I give it? 256. 256? Or like a two? But yes, 256 will work. It's an even number. 
Um, and then what could our second factor be? Negative one. Negative one. Sounds great. Yeah, th this is a possible equation. It's not the equation because they didn't give me numbers, but this is a possible equation for them. Good. Now it's time for the word problem. All right. So this thing actually exists. I don't know where it is, though. I need to look up where this is. I can't even pronounce it either. The Kalusahachichi manuscripts uh, consist of two bronze cylinders. One of the cylinders has a volume of 50 pi cubic feet and has a radius and height shown in feet. Find the radius and height of this cylinder. Okay, I gave you a little clue here for the volume of a cylinder. It should be pi r squared times h. Okay. So we know my volume has to equal, what color do you want to do? Let's do purple. My volume is 50, right? So we're going to say 50 pi has to equal pi r squared h. So I need to find r and h. Okay. All right, now what? Get rid of pi. Get rid of pi. We can do that, get rid of pi on both sides. So now we have 50 equals r squared h. I feel like I'm missing information. It should have told you what the height was. I'm gonna tell you what the height is. Cause it says it has a volume in feet and the height, radius and height as shown. And height shown, it's not showing you, I'm telling you. Okay, height is, height should be four r squared minus 17. Sorry, not all information was given to you. They were setting you up. Okay, now let's try it. Now we can move forward because now I can, because I can't solve for a variable if they're both there, right? We need to get rid of one of them. So now I know what H is. I can replace H with 4R squared minus 17. So 50 equals r squared times 4r squared minus 17. There we go. Now what? Well, in order to sip, this is going to be uh, a quartic. We need to uh, get everything over to the same side. So I'm going to distribute my r squared, and I'm going to subtract 50. So it's all equal to 0. So this becomes 4r to the power of 4 minus 17r squared. And I'm going to go ahead and subtract 50 over here. So it looks like that. Woohoo! Now we get to solve that guy. Okay. So we are going to use slip and slide for this one. Okay, slip and slide is back. We're going to take uh, 4, multiply it to the end. So we're going to have r to the power of 4 minus 17r minus 200. Okay, remember we do a times c. So this is 4 times negative 50. Uh, yes, it is. Thank you. Okay. Multiplies to give me 200, but adds to give me 17. I think you said it earlier, Brennan. What was it? Uh, negative 25 and 8. Negative 25 and positive 8. What goes in front of both of these? R squared. Good. 
Then we have to slide the four back out. Our first one becomes 4r squared minus 25. The second factor becomes r squared plus 2. What's that first guy? It's a difference of squares. So this is going to be 2r plus 5 and 2r minus 5. r squared plus 2 is just going to stay. It's not a sum of squares because 2 is not a square. So it just, it just is what it is. Okay. So now I can take each piece, make it equal to 0, and solve. So my first factor, 2r plus 5, will give me a radius of negative 5 divided by 2. Did I lose anybody? Is that okay? Or negative 2.5. Yep. The second one gives me a radius of positive 5 over 2 or 2.5, as Rowan was saying. My third one, bless you, gives me a radius of what? I square root 2. Positive, negative. There should be two of them. Because if you make it equal to zero, you still have to subtract the two over and then square root both sides. So that's where that comes from. Mm -hmm. You make each factor equal to zero. So two R plus five equals zero. You have to subtract 5 and then divide by 2. Okay. Yeah, which which radius? I can't have three different radii, right? Only one of these actually works. Which one works? This one right here. How come, how come negative 2.5 isn't going to work? We're not doing negative measurements. How come the I doesn't work? It's imaginary. We're not going to have imaginary measurements, okay? So we have my radius. Woohoo! Radius is 2.5 feet. Um, we're missing the height. How can I find height? It was given, but now I can plug in my R. Correct? So we know that height is 4R squared. So we're going to say 4 times 2.5 squared minus 17. Uh, what is 2.5 squared? Um, 6.25. What is 4 times 6.25? Uh, 25. How do you do that? And what is 25 minus 17? 8. So we have a height of 8 feet. So this thing that really does exist, I looked up that picture. It has a height of eight feet. It has a radius of two and a half feet. And it has a volume of 50 pi feet. Real life. It's pretty cool. I looked at pictures. It's pretty neat what it looks like. All right. Questions? We're okay? Kind of? <laughs> okay.